The City Lights demo is an example of Keep 3D being put to a novel use to implement a deferred rendering pipeline. The reason for this is that normally with OpenGL you're using a forward renderer where you're limited to the number of lights that you can have on screen and affecting objects in scene. For every single pixel that gets shaded, you have to multiply that by the number of lights to add up the contributions from those light sources. With using a deferred rendering pipeline, you separate out the geometry considerations from the lighting considerations and therefore massively reducing the complexity and dependency on the number of lights. This then allows us to render thousands of lights in real time rather than just 8, 16 or so. The first three textures we see here are the contents of what's called the G buffer, the geometry buffer. So in the first pass of the rendering, we render depth buffer contents, the world space normal vectors, and also the object albedo, its color. And then we do a second pass where we then render the light volumes within the scene. And that's what these circles are appearing on the screen here. So we rely upon the rasterizer to generate the fragments for those. And then inside the fragment shader that gets executed, we know we can add up just the contribution from that one particular light source. Using additive blending, that then results in the lights actually contributing to the scene and making the final scene composited there. To generate this city, we actually pulled in the OpenStreetMap data from Manhattan and then extruded the buildings within Houdini and exported that data. And then the other thing you'll notice in the scene as well, the cars are all animated. The application reads in a text file that contains Bezier curve control points. When the application starts up, that is read in, and then we evaluate the Bezier curves on the CPU, and we store the actual positions from the Bezier curves inside a texture. That texture is not containing typical red, green, blue values, but instead X, Y, Z values for the car positions. And then as we render each frame, we move a time slider across the texture, and we look up the current car position from each row in the texture and then the vertex shader does all the heavy lifting of the animation. This is running at a solid 60 frames a second on fairly mediocre hardware, and this scene contains approximately 1,500 real-time lights.